Good morning. Welcome to St. Paul's Episcopal Church, Murfreesboro, Tennessee. We are glad that you are joining us for worship this morning. The service bulletin can be found in either the e-blast that went out if you're an email subscriber or on our website. We do hope that you will join us in praying and singing um, as we worship our risen Christ. Our first hymn is number 174, At the Lamb's High Feast We Sing. Alleluia! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen, risen indeed. Alleluia! Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears, and with a loud shout, all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Like newborn infants, long for pure spiritual milk, so that by you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourself be built into the spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices, acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, see, I'm laying in Zion, a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and to whoever believes to him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become very head of the corner, and the stone that makes them stumble a rock that makes them fall. 
They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may procl proclaim the mighty act of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I not been with you all this time, Philip, and yet you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth, the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I've always loved to read, and when I'm feeling particularly virtuous, I'll pick something up that is edifying, a biblical commentary or memoir, something like that. More often, however, it's a thriller of some kind with a fairly predictable, um, yet still engaging action and intrigue. A hero or heroine motivated usually by a, you know, some sense of justice, a cause to get behind. Um, but often they'll have a personal angle, a personal angle too, right? A partner, a best friend, a girlfriend is killed or is in some sort of danger. So the quest for justice and the quest to get even end up sort of becoming the same quest. I found too that the most realistic or at least the most compelling villains will often have the same motivation. Revenge. Getting even after some sort of personal tragedy. Getting even sells because it is a universal inclination. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, 
That's probably the most famous saying that we might remember from our Western civilization classes. And you get bonus points today uh, if you remember that that phrase comes originally from Hammurabi's Code, one of the earliest systematic law treatises that we know about. It's interesting though, actually, an eye for an eye is in Hammurabi's Code a limiting law. If you lose an eye, you are only to take an eye from your adversary. The goal of this law was to limit the cycle of retribution, to get even without causing a generational blood feud. Even Hammurabi, this ancient Babylonian king, knew the danger of allowing our desire for revenge and retribution to go unchecked. And so instead, he instituted state-sanctioned violence as an alternative. But there is even another way, not the way of the cheap thriller or of Hammurabi. This other way, the motto is, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. This is the way of Stephen. The way of forgiveness. This poignant and troubling story of the first Christian martyr shows us this alternative way. A way that is, or at least seems to be, much more costly for us. In fact, it costs Stephen his life. And yet, when we walk in this way, this way of forgiveness, we discover it to be the way and the truth, and the life. For forgiveness is the way of Jesus himself. Jesus, who is our very salvation. So what can we learn, then, about this way of forgiveness from the example of our brother Stephen? So first, forgiveness is a lifestyle. We don't know a whole lot about Stephen. But what we do know is pretty remarkable. He was one of those commissioned by the apostles as someone full of the Holy Spirit, full of wisdom, to help oversee the distribution of food and resources to the needy in the community. This issue had apparently become very contentious. Various factions were arguing heatedly about who got what. And so Stephen was placed in the middle of a situation with high tempers, with conflict, with competing viewpoints. In other words, he had a lot of opportunities to practice forgiveness in his day-to-day life. And I think that that is crucial. In a moment of crisis, we all revert to our training. So the remarkable display of forgiveness that Stephen demonstrates as he is literally being stoned doesn't just happen in a vacuum. He had practiced forgiveness. His training was in forgiveness. And so when this moment of crisis came, he reverted to his training. Forgiveness is a lifestyle formed in little daily opportunities become ingrained patterns within our hearts. Second, forgiveness is prayer. Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Stephen prays. God is the audience here, not the angry mob. Forgiveness is prayer. Prayer through which we surrender our claim to get even. Prayer that transforms us to trust that God's will will be done. And prayer even and especially in which we ask God to bless our offender. Stephen intercedes for his murderers, asking that God would not count their sin against them. Forgiveness often involves incredible personal cost. And yet it's important to note what forgiveness is not. Forgiveness is not the same thing as reconciliation. 
There's no restored relationship between Stephen and the mob. And so it's important for all of us to not casually equate forgiveness and reconciliation, though of course they are related. Reconciliation requires repentance, what we call amendment of life and truth-telling. And it's fundamentally about repairing broken relationships between people. Forgiveness is about our own hearts and about our relationship with God. Forgiveness is prayer. Third, forgiveness is a gift. We are a people who are already covered in the forgiveness of Jesus. So Stephen's story parallels the story of his Savior, especially in these final three words that he speaks, all of which echo Jesus' own words from the cross in Luke's gospel. And it's the same Luke. The same Luke writes both the gospel, part one, and Acts of the Apostles, part two. And so this parallelism is deliberate. Back on the cross, Jesus promised the penitent criminal, today you will be with me in paradise. Stephen sees and proclaims the vision of paradise with Jesus standing with God in glory and near. Stephen prays, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. While Jesus on the cross quoted Psalm 31, praying, into your hands I commend my spirit. And of course, Stephen's, Lord, do not hold the sin against them imitates Jesus saying, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. We can't read or hear Stephen's story without seeing Jesus sort of superimposed upon it. Stephen and all of us are called to forgive because we have received the unsurpassed gift of forgiveness from Jesus. And this gift this gift that we have received is, in fact, the undoing of the greatest injustice of them all, which is death itself. Death is the greatest, most unforgivable evil that will be done to us. For many of our church community, we feel this all too keenly right now. And this past Tuesday, my own family bid goodbye to our beloved uncle, Chuck. We all walk with troubled hearts. And that's right where our gospel text from John meets us this morning. There's a certain irony in Jesus' words to the disciples that open our text this morning. Do not let your hearts be troubled. The irony is that Jesus' own heart has been troubled. First at the tomb of his friend Lazarus a few chapters earlier, and then just a few minutes earlier, when he knows that Judas is about to betray him to his own death. Death is profoundly troubling, even for God the Son. As New Testament scholar Raymond Brown reminds us, death belongs to the realm of the adversary, the realm of Satan. Putting Jesus to death on the cross is the last, the greatest, the most hostile act of Satan. So the disciples' troubled hearts, Jesus' own troubled hearts, when confronted by death, isn't just this sort of emotional or sentimental thing that they need to get over. Rather, it is an acknowledgement of the reality of their place, of our own place, right in the center of the cosmic struggle between Jesus and the powers of evil and hell and death. And yet, do not let your hearts be troubled. Or perhaps the sense is too troubled. Or stay troubled. 
Why? Why? Because Jesus continues, in my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, you also may be. This gift, the undoing of death, is the promise of the continuing eternal presence of Jesus. The forgiver will come again to the forgiven and take us to himself so that where he is, we also will be forever. And Stephen's story bears witness to this. In his last moments, he is filled again with the Holy Spirit. The veil separating heaven and earth is torn. He sees Jesus in the fullness of the glory of God. Heaven breaks into earth at the moment of his death. This nearness of Jesus to him, this vision of heaven flows into Stephen's body and soul. And so the only thing he can do is forgive. His heart isn't troubled. Jesus is far too near for that. And so no. No, we do not get even with death. We kick its ass. No eye for an eye here. The gift of forgiven life with Christ swallows up the power of death completely, and it becomes for us nothing more than the gate through which our shepherd takes us by the hand and guides us through into everlasting life. But as we wait for that, in the meantime, let our earthly pilgrimage, the road before us, be the way of forgiveness, the truth of this good, good gospel, and the life abundant. Amen. Let us proclaim our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people are according to Form 4 as printed in the bulletin or found on page 388 of the Book of Common Prayer. 
let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loved us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them joy, the joy of your salvation. Those with cancer, Carol, Cheryl, Drew, Eric, Gracie, and Sarah. For those in cancer remission, Andy. For those healing from surgery, Beth and Rose. For those experiencing a mental health issue. For those with other needs, Anne, Ashlyn, Betty, Bobby, Bruce, Chris, Jean, Hayden, Jason, Jennifer and family, Jim, John, Julie, Kim, Megan, William, Miller, Pam, Rachel, Ryan, and those who are ill, isolated, or fearful because of the coronavirus. For refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, especially Abu Ali, Charles, Charlie, Chris, David, Dustin, Gregory, Jack, James, Jesse, Joe, Keith, Keaton, Linda, Oscar, Quentin, Stefan, Terence, Tiffany, Tyrone, and Walter. For the homeless, especially Brianna, Carol, Cheryl, Cindy, Connie, Deborah, Donna, Gail, Janet, Jessica, Joanne, Kelly, Elsie, Kim, Kimberly, Christy, Laura, Melissa, Renata, Sharon, Tiffany, and Trenton. For all those in the military service, especially Benjamin, Brady, Brent, Chris, Derek, Elaine, Evan, Caitlin, Patrick, Taylor, Trevor, and Zach. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, especially Diane Madison, mother of Todd Madison, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants, who now live by faith, May with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen.
Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you with all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Once again, good morning. Thank you for joining with us this beautiful spring morning as we worship our, uh, our, our Savior, Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. A few brief announcements. Please stay tuned after the postlude um, as we uh, will have a, a short, brief tribute for our students, who, especially those who are graduating, um, uh, on your screen. A uh, quick reminder, our discipleship groups uh, got off to a wonderful start uh, this past week. There's still time this week if you, and a few spots still available, if you would like to sign up for one of those, uh, check your Friday e-blast, and we'd love to have you join us. A reminder that there is a prayer for spiritual communion in uh, the bulletin. Uh, Jesus promises to be in the midst of us um, wherever we are, and so we um, offer that. Uh, that's, uh, the bishop of the Diocese of Tennessee has authorized that for our use. Um, so I encourage you to pray that um, immediately after the invitation. Um, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. God Lord, will give the angels charge of you. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Our service continues with the great thanksgiving prayer B, found on page 367 of your Book of Common Prayer or in your worship bulletin. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you, 
Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, but chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us, and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give you thanks, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, and out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, and we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with Paul and Stephen and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you, as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Our final hymn, hymn 525, The Church's One, Found One Foundation, we will sing verses 1, 3, and 5.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.